In Austin, Texas, there's a nail salon where you can get what I think are very fancy manicures. I'm extremely not an expert on this subject, but at this Austin salon, you can get on your nails, for example, a portrait of Carl Sagan, the cosmologist, or Neil deGrasse Tyson, the astrophysicist. Also at this nail salon, puns, you're my butter half. <laughs> And now, uh, for one day and one day only, you can get Senator Wendy Davis nail art. If your thumb is one Wendy Davis portrait short of being perfect, now is your chance to fix that problem. So yes, there is Wendy Davis nail art in Austin, Texas right now. The salon says that half the Wendy Davis nail art proceeds will go to Planned Parenthood. Also in Wendy Davis-inspired culture news, you should know that the internet has already cast the actress Connie Britton in the starring role of the not-yet-pitched, not-yet-written, not-yet-actual movie about Wendy Davis's filibuster this week, Mrs. Coach as Senator Davis. Wendy Davis, at least for the moment, is a political phenomenon. Texas State Senator Wendy Davis filibusters her way to democratic stardom. Texas's newest political star, Wendy Davis, feminist superhero, filibuster hero dares, to te dares Texas to draft her for a run at the governorship. Wendy Davis, folk hero. The pro-choice caucus in the United States House of Representatives today put out a statement thanking Senator Davis, who is, after all, a state senator, thanking her for her all-day, all-night filibuster. And on this show last night, Cecile Richards, the national president of Planned Parenthood and completely and totally of Texas politics, Cecile Richards here last night marveled about what happened with Wendy Davis this week in Texas. There were folks in, in obviously there on the Senate floor, but thousands of people outside in the rotunda filling the Capitol. And uh, it, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I have never seen anything like it in all my history of organizing or, or as a Texan. Now the big question in Democratic politics is... What's next here? Uh, last night, our own beloved Chris Hayes put the question of Wendy Davis's political future to Wendy Davis herself. And unlike most politicians, she actually answered the question. Your state has not elected a statewide Democrat for quite some time. Are you going to run for governor? You know, I, I would be lying if I told you that I hadn't had aspirations to run for a statewide office. I love this state, and it's been an incredible opportunity to represent it in the Texas Senate. I think the, the real story will be, uh, will the sentiment of people hold? Uh, will they demonstrate their desire for new leadership in this state? If yesterday was any indication, I think chances are pretty good that that's going to be the case. If he had not been on notice before, Texas Governor Rick Perry uh, is now on notice. About 15 hours after Wendy Davis proclaimed her aspirations to run for statewide office, Governor Perry found himself in front of a microphone and a camera and an anti-abortion audience that gave him a standing ovation when he tried to mansplain the true meaning of Wendy Davis's own family, trying to mansplain that history to Wendy Davis. Even the woman who filibustered the Senate the other day, was born into difficult circumstances. She was the daughter of a single woman. She was a teenage mother herself. She managed to eventually graduate from Harvard Law School and serve in the Texas Senate. It's just unfortunate that she hasn't learned from her own example, that every life must be given a chance to realize its full potential and that every life matters. You got that, Senator Davis, about your own life and what you need to learn from it? Isn't it nice that you managed to get through law school? In case you think Rick Perry has not meant to judge Wendy Davis and her life in uncomfortably personal terms, if you were expecting maybe an apology or something, uh, here he was on Dallas's NBC affiliate a few minutes later. She didn't come from uh, particularly good circumstances. What if her mom had said, you know, I just can't do this. I don't want to do this. At that particular point in time, I think it becomes very personal. To all of this, uh, Wendy Davis had a reply. I would just say that it, it really demeans the office that he holds to make uh, a personal statement like that. So this, this, this happened today. Rick Perry clearly thinks that Wendy Davis could be his opponent should he choose to run for re-election as governor. And Wendy Davis seems like she'd be a formidable candidate, particularly given the fundraising power of her new national profile. 
Also, Wendy Davis could be out of her current job in time for the governor's race. The Supreme Court gutting the Voting Rights Act this week allows Texans Republicans to redraw the congressional district map in a way that targets Wendy Davis essentially out of her seat. But they cannot redistrict Democratic voters clear out of the state entirely. So could Wendy Davis's rocketing popularity on her side of the aisle sustain her through a run for governor? Does this moment in Texas Democratic politics mean that the longtime Democratic pipe dream of Texas turning blue is actually sort of, at least a little, on its way?